You're listening to Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckler, and this is a Health Academy, our regular opportunity to have a talk with academics involved in the health discipline. Today, my guest is Associate Professor David Greenfield. David's uh, with the Health Improvement Research Centre for Healthcare Resilience and Implementation Science at the Australian Institute of Health Innovation at Macquarie University in Australia. David joins us from Sydney. David, welcome to Health Professional Radio. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, David, that's a long title, uh, Health Improvement Research Centre for Healthcare Resilience and Implementation Science. What happens there? Tell us a little bit about it. Well, quite simply, our focus is about investigating how to improve quality and safety in the healthcare system. We do that by looking at how to improve and enhance the things that are going right, how can we identify those, um, look at what are the factors that are enabling things to to occur in a positive sense and enabling good care and simultaneously also identifying those circumstances where there are challenges to providing good care and how they can be overcome and improved so that patients and health providers um, are are working in a a positive environment and, and we get good care outcomes and effective care outcomes for people. Now, healthcare is a, a very old industry, if I can call it an, an industry. Isn't uh, quality something that they've just, you know, fixed years ago and have nailed down? Quality is an ongoing achievement. It's not a destination. Quality is something that is achieved at, at each moment that care is provided, each time a health professional or somebody working in the health system, whether it's one of the administration staff whether it's a frontline clinician or whether it's a manager of a ward or a service interacts with a patient, that's when quality and and, and safety are enacted. It's something that's done on a moment-by-moment and also has to be examined and introduced and and, and monitored in a structural way as well to enable it to to track trends over time and to look at how things are improving and where gaps are and where the challenges are. And, David, what's been... Uh, the focus of your attention recently? What's been drawing your attention? Well, the, the, a major project we've just been uh, finishing, in fact, within the last month, it's a five-year study which has been looking at accreditation of, of health services um, here in Australia, and that's look, looked at work in the general practice area, the aged care, and also the acute services. So it's about how you use accreditation schemes or external regulation schemes to, to identify and to monitor care and through those and schemes engage staff, health professional providers and consumers in looking and reviewing care processes and trying to then work out how they can be enhanced and um, c- continued safely into the future. And you're saying that's been a five-year study? That's a five-year study we've, we've undertaken. It's been a collaborative project with um, our uh, the accreditation agencies in the aged care, general practice, and acute sector in Australia. Um, it's a NH, uh, no, sorry, an Australian Research Council f- uh, funded study. Mm-hmm. That's uh, I think been very successful over the period in, in helping us identify how how those schemes work, their, their strengths, and um, how they can be improved going forward. And have you got any results from that study that you can share with us today? Uh, yeah, I think we can. Uh, say that accreditation is a, uh, a system that helps promote good organisational and clinical performance. It's something, it's a system that promotes positive quality and safety cultures across and within organisations. So it helps give staff a chance to stop and think about what they're doing, how they provide services and how those services can be improved. Um, it's something that is challenging for staff and, and it's clear that um, finding ways to simplify and, and to target accreditation systems is important, but it's also recognising that they do help drive improvements in quality and safety and, and produce cultures in organisations that are focused on quality and safety and improving care. That's, uh, that's interesting, David. Have you been able to quantify um, in any way the, the value of accreditation? We have been doing um, some studies uh, as part of part of this umbrella of work we've been doing, which have been looking at the economic um, costs of accreditation and and the costs of that. That work is currently under review, peer review, with 
um, a, a couple of different journals, and when that's been accepted, we'll be able to speak more about that. Mm -hmm. But it has been looking at uh, and been able to demonstrate that it's a very... Contrary to, to what many people think, when you look at the overall costs of providing health services, there's a very, very low um, uh, percent involved. The challenge often, I, th I think, that health, busy health professionals face and busy services face is cr creating time and space for their staff to stop and, and look at the quality and safety and look at the, the policy procedures, the systems around that, what's going on. So many services these days and, and providers these days are so busy with delivering services that sometimes it can be seen as a bit of a luxury to stop and think about what's going on or review how things are occurring when in fact I guess what we would argue is making time to do that and finding ways of doing that, structuring it in for people's work is essential if those services are going to continue to be um, the best that they can. You're listening to the Health Academy on Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckler and my guest is Professor David Greenfield. David's from the Australian Institute of Health Innovation at Macquarie University. And we've just been touching on the issue of time and space for workers in the health sector, and I guess clinicians as well, to contemplate and think about the value of uh, accreditation in a busy day-to-day -day life. David, it's an interesting point that you raise because the um, constant money pressure on all health providers means that there's a need to get the outputs and the outputs are driven by the number of patients who come in and go out the door. Is there any solution that you see to the um, time and space problem with accreditation? Uh, no, not really. I, I, I think it's, it, it's one of uh, a continual struggle that services are going to have and I don't think there is any solution, easy solution to it. I think it is about recognising that quality and safety requires time, requires um, time for health professionals to stop and look at what they're doing to gather data about what their services are doing, opportunities to uh, examine and, and um, reflect on that information and how they work interprofessionally and work together so that they can then identify ways of making improvement or enhancing the positive things that they are going, recognising the strengths that they, they, that they currently have. There aren't shortcuts to doing that. It's providing people with the opportunity to do it. Not to do it is to leave people in a position where they don't have the, the information to uh, demonstrate and to examine what their work is uh, achieving, which can leave them in an, um, uh, positions where it, it doesn't. They don't have the uh, the right information to to demonstrate the quality that they're doing. Has, have your, has your work led you to look at accreditation in other industries and, and its benefits? Has there been any comparative studies undertaken? Well, well we've focused on, on trying to examine accreditation in, in healthcare and I guess what we've mm. found through that is that across the different sectors within healthcare, so that from aged care to general practice to acute services, it's that while the pro accreditation programs are similar, external regulation programs are similar, they're also very different once you get into the specific cultures and the specific um, dynamics of each sector and that, and that so much of the, the characteristics of those sectors is very important to take into account for the type of programs, the standards and, and the focus that they have. So in a sense it's getting really down to the devil or the, the detail in each, each sector matters and, and the, the cultures that operate in those sectors. Yes, it's, it's a, I guess a a perpetual problem that we have in that the way we do health these days pretty obviously means that the money is not going to extend as the population does and we're going to have to gain efficiencies rather than just volume of service. And I guess accreditation is one of the things that will lead to that efficiency. Well, I think that's, that's exactly right, that, that by making and, and providing time for health professionals to review and examine their work helping them gather data which helps them um, look at the outcomes of what they're achieving and how they're achieving that is a way of being able to drive efficiencies and it, it's only by spending a bit of time and resources in doing that that you're going to be able to identify other ways of providing services or more effective systems for doing that. David, it's been a pleasure chatting with you this afternoon. I look forward to the opportunity to have a chat with you when you're five-year project is uh, published and we can discuss with you in detail 
the more of the results of that research. Thank you for giving your time up for Health Professional Radio. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure. And our um, re- results uh, are happy to share results from our studies if people wanted to contact me via uh, my contact details you have. And we've already published a range of papers and presentations about that which are freely available for people. Thank you very much for that offer. So uh, if you've been listening and uh, you'd like to get in touch with David, contact us here at the station and we'll pass on the details to him. If you've just missed our interview, there's a transcript on our website at Health Professional Radio. It's www.hpr.fm. And there's also a SoundCloud archive and you can hear the audio on YouTube as well. This has been the Health Academy. My name is Wayne Buckler. You're listening to Health Professional Radio.